looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry. And this has just been such an amazing month as it as it continues. And we are are celebrating just the the rise in the feminine heart. And so what we're doing is we're continuing speaking about this amazing compilation, this um, book that has brought so many co-authors and, and women together, Rise, Amazing Woman, Rise. This is the interview series, week three. And we're now on the fifth and six of the eight essential powers of the feminine heart that are the future of success in leadership. And I really, I always like to highlight that word because leadership, it comes in, oh, and we, we had so much fun last week talking about, you know, we start by leading ourselves and that's, we start with leading one. And, and I just want everybody to realize you all make a difference. So we are continuing with presence and self-authority. And as these authors, you know, through their writings, we see how the qualities of the feminine heart manifest these particular essential powers. Experience unforgettable lessons from inspired mentors, I love that word, that will motivate you to liberate your own hidden capacities, deepen the clarity of your inner voice, and fulfill your highest destiny. And so for the first half of the show, we are going to welcome Connie Ponturo, that's a, that's a fun word to say, too. I love <laughs> Hi, Connie. I just wanted to Hi. welcome you on first. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here, Lisa. Thank you so much. Oh. You know, I'm, I'm going to share your your quote and then your bio, but I have to tell you the word presence. You've given me something to think about. I, like, I can't wait to ask you a couple questions here because that that's a, that's a word worth unwrapping, I think. Yes. <laughs> yes. The word chose me. So the, oh, the work okay. shows me we'll, 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 we'll go into that. But, okay, but I've got to say one thing, Lisa. I don't know. Your yes. I am rising statement, and I hope at some point you read it oh. on air, uh, is just oh. beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. You know, I often forget that I am part of it. <laughs> I <laughs> want to say, that's why, I, in case, you know, your listeners don't know, you are part of this amazing book. And at some point, your I am rising statement is just beautiful. And so I just wanted to acknowledge oh. you and, and just, you know tell you that right that out. so sweet. Thank you. Thank you of so course. much. And, and here's a perfect example we can use right now to share with the listeners that often we are a part of things and we can sometimes look outward so much because we're, you know, I'm shiny, everything's shiny, but we forget that we're shiny too. So thank you. Oh, that was so yes. sweet. <laughs> well, I want to, your, your, um, well, I don't know what it's called a blurb, but a thing on the, your essential power. So this is what her, uh, what Connie's is. The essential power of presence Presence comes into our world when we are ready to stand still and be in our power. The power comes from being excited to live in this moment and to allow yourself to be within the moment and listen. It's like so, so deep. I love that. <laughs> and and to share with you, uh, Connie Conturo is a leading authority in the field of pain-free living, which includes the power of creating a harmonious connection of mindset, emotions, and body. Respected for her unique approach to transformational movement that merges Pilates, meditation, and mindset. Connie Ponturo teaches her clients how to flourish at every stage of age of their life. And to learn more about Connie, other than today in the next half hour, <laughs> uh, Connie Ponturo and her work, you can visit um, her website, Connie, this is C-O-N-N-I, Ponturo, P-O-N-T-U-R-O dot com, and also AbsolutePilatesUpstairs.com. That's fine. <laughs> I'm assuming you're upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> But let's I, let's do that first of all. Yes, how did present? Um, yes, presence. I won't say patience, but how did presence choose you? Um, you know, patience is in presence, so that's why I think they come out. You know, we were um, exploring. You know, what word do you want to pick? And 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 presence just kept coming back to me. And I'll tell you a personal story. Um, and I think we all have this 
how unpresent we are at times. And I think that's really why it chose me. It chose me because I wanted to experience more presence. So I'm going to tell everybody, you know the feeling you get in your car and you go from point A to point B and you have arrived at your destination and you don't know how you got there. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, my God. Yep. You know, it's rote, right? You you make a right, you make a left, you go straight, whatever. Or you get on the bus or you get on a subway. or you, So you're not thinking about what you're doing. And then sometimes I've been a Pilates teacher for 20 years, and sometimes you just kind of get into a rote that way. You're teaching the same things. I mean, you know, it, it just it, it just happens to all of us at some point. And I was like, you have to fight to be get out of that kind of fog and be present. It's hard to be present. Yeah. It's hard oh to be present because it's so easy to go, oh, this is so terrible. My life's not working. I don't feel great today. I don't want to do it. You know, it's easy to be negative. We seem to go down that road easily. So to to stop that chatter and to be in the moment is much more of a challenge for us. And so I love a challenge. I always say life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Neil Donald Walsh, that's his saying. It's on my wall, and I look at it, and I make my clients look at it. And, uh, boy, when I remember that, I'm like, yes, I have to be aware. You, I can't believe you just said yes. Actually, I can believe it. <laughs> <'Cause I'm sorry. laughs> um, I had the question I was really I, thinking about when I think about someone being present, a lot of people say the term uh, showing up, you know, mm-hmm. um, yep. how are you showing up and showing up and you just said, um, like, yes, I'm, I'm there. When when I think of that, that showing up, um, I also think of witnessing like you're witnessing what what is something or one thing we could pick our thing that we do want to show up for be present for or witness oh that's such that's a great question positive. that's such a great <laughs> question we want to be witness and show up for the daily moments oh, that make up our life because the moments of our life are our life in miniature right the moments oh, of our day that's our life so you can go through it and you know how it is. Oh, my gosh, it's, we're now in March. What happened in January? But if we can show up, if we can be here, if we can pay, pay reverence to ourselves and honor where we are, wherever that is. And I mean I'm showing up, but I'm, I feel crappy today. That's also very valid. You don't have to be yeah. happy and perky. I don't mean that, but I mean like I'm right in this moment. I'm going to be here. I'm going to notice what's around me. I'm going to look at the cars, at the trees. I'm going to look at the person who's next to me. I'm going to look in someone's eyes. I'm going to have a conversation with meaning. I'm going to share myself. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. That's really where we have to honor. I I can I can't believe it. I get someone goosebumps for the show because you do I'm going to share myself is okay here's a fun question is it possible to share ourselves truly if we are not present you know I think you no I don't think so I mean I think mm-hmm. you're you're sharing some of yourself but to yes. really honor where we are. And especially with this book, Rise Amazing Women Rise, to really stand in that power and that honor and that value. Our value is very important. I think you have to be in presence. I think you have to yes. be grounded in presence to, 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 to see everything. Ooh, I love the grounded in presence. Oh, my goodness. Right? Grounded um, in presence and our worth. I think that's, you know, it's yes. so easy for us to get out of what our worth is. We are so worthy and so valuable. Mm. You actually use the word um, like a reverence, reverence. Um, mm-hmm. that, that's, a, that's a sacred word that really takes it to another level. And rising, like it, it sounds very, the, the way you, it feels like what you're sharing with us is that um, to have presence is so honorable and so valuable and so empowering. Like, Oh, yes. I mean, just think of all the moments of your day. If you can really be where you are with your children, with your partner, with your friends, at work, on the radio, everything magnitudes. 
everything just amps, amplifies. That's what I was looking for. Everything amplifies. Oh. And when it's amplified, it has that much more. It can go right to our heart. And isn't that what we're talking about in the feminine heart? Mm. We're talking about going mm. right to, the, to the, the course of it, right to the depth of, of who we are. I'm glad that you brought the feminine heart into this right now because um, so when you said amplified in the sound, I actually started picturing a speaker, you know, oh, we have an amp and we have a speaker, we have like surround sound, you know? Right. <laughs> yes. And then, and then having it amplified and then there's that much more power. It can reach more people and that's, mm-hmm. and you're right. Cause then it's the heart. When we, when we're talking, this is really about a new conversation. The whole rise, amazing woman rise series is, is that new conversation. So is, Presence isn't, um, you know, boy or, or girl, but what role, so I'm gonna, I think it's the heart here, I think, but how, what role does the feminine heart play in presence and vice versa? Oh, well, I, first of all, the feminine heart is, is, is such a beautiful phrase that Marsh has brought forward and, and, and really as a new conversation is coming from that. And I think when you're present, that you can really be all that you can be in that in that in that feminine heart all of the values that you you that we brought forth in this book um all of the values that um are 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 ours really just come to the forefront and and we can embody everything so much to evolve self love intuition presence balance self authority connection radiant achievement all of it just brings us to the uh the top our cup runneth over. Our heart mm-hmm. runneth over because mm-hmm. it's just, it's all bubbling up. So I think presence really to, to I'm going to say witness, again, to witness all that you are and all that's around yeah. you. Yeah. The, um, the That's so funny that witnessing, it was such a powerful word. And it's, you know, often we'll, you must share this in Pilates and um, yoga and meditation about being the observer. And the how would you, just your your opinion kind of feeling, the, di- the difference in observing and witnessing, is one more personal than the other? Or um, No, I think they're in the same. I mean, I think, you know, I have the honor of witnessing people in chronic pain. Uh, um, and, yeah. and that's the hardest place to be in. Nobody wants to be there. Everyone yeah. wants to be out of it pretty quickly, right? And, right. and so I'm yeah. always saying that that pain is your gift. Mm. So if I mm. can teach people a different way of thinking and a different way of, of viewing how their life is turning out, um, I get to witness who they get to become, and then I get to observe the changes. Mm. In in in, right. in in their work and who they are, and once you're and you know this because you've done so many shows on this, but once your attitude changes, once your outlook changes, your life changes. Yes. yes. Oh, doesn't it? Oh my! <laughs> right? It's like it's like what happened? How come everything's working out today? Because you have a different outlook on it. You have a different feeling on it. You're not, you know, I say when you're not present, you're overthinking, overstressing. What if, what if this happens, everything is a worry. You're always looking um, ahead, oh, my God, or regretting behind you. You're spinning. You're not in your body. You're not in your head. You're not in your heart. You're always out there. So if we can bring ourselves back into our heart, back into our lives, and be present, whew, the world changes. The world changes, even if you're someone in pain. Because the minute you start yeah. to acknowledge it and tell a different story, pain just changes. The, you, you, sorry, that, now that's a lot to unwrap. I have, okay, so here's a fun thing you said. When you're out there, I actually imagine somebody, you know, on a ledge, like really, yeah, you know, exactly. teetering out there and really yeah. kind of feeling like the wind could blow you and you've got to constantly compensate to keep that mm-hmm. balance. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are things coming at you. And so um, I love that you meant, so that was one thing that I really envisioned and felt like, yeah, like that's not safe out there. You've got to come back in. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the pain-free part. So uh, my question, and I want to ask you this specifically because what you just mentioned, um, you really work with, uh, I, I read it, it said pain-free living, which is the har- uh, the harmonious relationship, I believe it was, or connection between right. mindset, emotion, and body. So in that language, what is it that's causing us pain? Um, yeah, in, well, in those in that in your world, Cause the pain well, in, my, in my world, pain is very real. 
So not to diminish or to undermine anyone's pain. But when someone comes to me in chronic pain, they've seen lots of doctors. They've, you know, had all the tests. I don't, you know, I work with many, many doctors, so I never, you know, I'm not a medical Uh person. So uh, what I'm saying to them is, are you ready to tell a different story? Are you ready to tell the story of a pain-free life, a fulfilled life, a life where you're full of joy, where you're full of life, where you're active? Because a lot of times when we're in chronic pain, we tell the story of our pain. I have back pain. Yes. Did I tell you, Lisa, about my back pain? Oh, yeah, I've got back pain. Oh, Lisa, have I told you about my back pain? Oh, my back pain hurts to late. <laughs> Lisa, have I told you about You know what I mean? So yeah. we get stuck in the story or whatever the story is. You know, somebody doesn't, my friends don't like me. I don't have any friends. I don't have any, you know, we get stuck in whatever the story yeah. is. So the moment we can tell a different story, we have a different outcome. Okay, this is going to be a tricky one for me. I have to. I want to g- grab this one. So, what, okay, so huh, we don't say we have something like that. We have back pain, but we don't want to talk about it or tell the story about it. But we have to be present in it. So, do you? Are we saying that we want to? What are some tips for somebody to not tell the story but be present and aware? How do we tell a different story while being present in the story? <laughs> Right. So, so that's great. That's why we teach, I teach yoga nidra meditation. So yoga nidra meditation is sleep-based meditation. So you do it lying Ooh, down. I like it. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Here's the thing about meditation, and it's true of all meditation. The reason why we do meditation is we take ourselves out of our monkey mind, right? We all have that, that brain that overthinks, tells us stories, I'm not good enough, blah, 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 on and on and on. So we take ourselves out of that monkey mind. We take ourselves, take a step back. All meditation does that. Then when you come out of meditation, you feel calmer. All of a sudden you get in your car, someone cuts you off, and you're not screaming at that other person, hey, idiot. You're like, okay, I'm going to just let that person go. He must have had a bad day. So you see how you take a step back from your life. Same thing in chronic pain. So after you've told the story and you get the story out about your chronic pain, then you decide to tell a new story about how you feel good. I feel good in my body today. Wow, I'm noticing I'm feeling strong. So you're starting to put in new story. I'm not saying that you're you're lying to yourself, but you're saying how you feel in that moment. And with meditation, it gets you to detach a little bit more so you're not so connected that that story is not the only thing replaying in your head. Mm. Okay, we, here's a good one for you. Yeah. What if somebody's got the story and their monkey mind says, I can't meditate, I can't shut my brain off? Fair, absolutely fair. So this is what you say. You're going to take a deep breath in. You're going to hold your breath for two counts and slowly blow out that air and open your eyes and say, I've just meditated. I meditated for one second. <gasps> I'm a good meditator. All right, so I'm going to go now for two breaths. I'm going to close my eyes, Uh inhale, hold my breath for two counts, slowly blow out that air as if I'm blowing through a straw. I'm going to do one more, inhale, hold for two counts, slowly blow off out through the straw, open my eyes. I've just done two seconds of meditation. I am a good meditator. Oh, I love that. Oh, that is so clever. That is so smart. You're right. And it's kind of what you said earlier, life in miniature. Yeah, it's it's not we yeah. make it way harder than it is. Yeah. Way mm-hmm. harder than it is on ourselves. Here's the deal. The bottom line is we do not have to be any different. We don't have to be better, we don't have to be taller, shorter, skinnier, fatter, richer, poor. We don't have to be different. We are perfect just the way we are. We just have to be present to that fact. Okay, this perfection thing that's just carrying on through here from author to author. <laughs> it's, it's, I love that, you know, it's this permission to not have to be perfect. And, yes, you're so right in recognizing that you just did a breath of meditation. Okay, and the great straw analogy. I forgot about that one. That was really helpful because everybody's had an experience with that, and they can imagine yes. that. that is so helpful. <laughs> and, honestly, that's all meditation is. Can you shut your mind for one second? Mm-hmm. That's it. Because we're oh, you're never going to shut the thoughts off. We're like right. puppies, right? That's what your thoughts are. It's like you know, squirrel, you know, looking from thing to right. thing. So you're never going to shut that brain off. But can you focus on your breath for one second? You're you can meditate. That's it. That's all you have to do. 
is even in that one second. And you know what I love that you mentioned is that you said, oh, look at me. I meditated for this. So, yay, success, accomplishment, then there's celebration. Yeah. And and that, I'm going to join this into it, that all comes and makes you feel really happy, good, joyful. And and I found that you have another book. It's called Falling Into Joy. <laughs> I do. Eight simple steps to allow your body to become your best friend. Simple, easy to do. Uh, steps uh, on my ConniePontero.com. I have videos that go along with the steps, so they're real easy to do. Anyone can do them anywhere. I believe you. And, and we want I believe to care of your body, and and your body takes care of your life, right? I love that. You know, I was a, that was a surprise to me when I found that because I went, oh, I love it. And then with the way you're speaking about everything, I can hear the joy in your voice. So I, I I'm gonna extra believe you. <laughs> but I, and. I can honestly say I believe it's because you are recognizing and witnessing and all those those life in miniature. I just love that right now. I'm imagining little mini marshmallows. Um, but it's, 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 so that sounds like a great – and you know what? Eight, there's not too many. There's not too – and so first of all, yes, I'm so glad that I want to direct everybody. And what I was going to ask about the joy is um, would joy be something – it's not a reward, but it's – it just comes when we are present. Do you find there's joy in presence or that you just become more joyful? No, joy is definitely a byproduct. Two byproducts ah. of presence happen to be peace and joy. Oh. Oh, and that's really that's at fun. the end of, I said it, I think I say at the end of my topic, that's really what I found after investigating um, and, um, and writing about this. And exploring mm-hmm. it was really, I found uh, the peace and the joy and the uh, love of the woman I was becoming and had become. Oh. Okay. Were you ever once your joy was hidden? And you, had um, to, you know, um, no. I mean, you know, that's something falling into joy I've been working on. I work on it with my uh, clients. It's very important to me. It's a word that's that's uh, incredibly infused with with power. Um, but I just think it comes to us. You know, people are like, joy, really? I mean, everyone thinks that joy only can be big. It's not. It comes to us in the smallest moments. And I think when we choose joy, when we really focus on noticing joy, we get more and more of it. Like everything else, it just expands. Whatever we focus right. on expands. Yes, I love that. It, it, that's so true. It does good or bad. It, it, it good or bad, yeah. It, good or bad. No <laughs> judgment here. Yep, exactly. No judgment. Yeah. Just good or bad. Just just know that it, that's the truth of it. Yes. Now, um, just because I this time always flies by, but um, the because this is – your chapter in a rise amazing woman rise and this is yep. marsh engel has put together this beautiful thing and it yes we know it's about starting that new conversation which i'm really feeling like that presence is just so easily captured because we just tiny it like just highlight it but when i think of legacy leaving a legacy that sounds huge to me like in fact i remember years ago when somebody said oh what's your footprint do you want to leave what legacy and i thought Oh my gosh, I'm not important enough. I'm, I'm not. I don't want to do that. That's too big of a responsibility in a, in a role. But in your opinion or words, how would you? Do you think we all leave a legacy of sort? And how do we, um, we do. feel big enough to do it? We we, yeah. we leave a carbon uh, imprint of ourselves. Everyone has has one. Everyone leaves one, whether they know it or not. And absolutely important. We are all important. And uh, I feel my legacy is to hopefully bring more um, joy into this world and and love and Mm -hmm. being present with who I am and who the people around me are. That's really important. Uh, uh, One thing I I really jumped in in writing this, to be more present, I had to show myself more of myself and to put myself out there and show myself to my family, to my my kids, Mm -hmm. to my husband, um, to my community, to my studio, to my teachers, and I found that I really had to put myself out there. And in doing so, I've gotten asked to step up more and more, more speaking engagements, more people asking me to come come teach and, and uh, do workshops and stuff like that. So, you know, it you gotta be you gotta show up. All of us have to show up. Yes, and it's funny. The um, world I needs love us. It. Like, Right? It's like step up, up, show and share yourself. I love this. That's it. <laughs> this easy thing. And and I, I'm gonna I am totally taking personal advantage here and I have to ask you this because I read this on your site and I was like I I know this is a random thing, everybody listeners just just share it with me here, but <laughs> I am such 
a, a user lover. I couldn't, like, I travel with it. I love my foam roller. And you uh, use the foam roller. <laughs> it, I love it you. Changes. It, it changed my life. And I have to say that, um, do you teach people how to use oh, that? Lisa, you have just <laughs> made my day. Girlfriend, I cannot tell you. Everyone, go get a foam roller. They're very yes. easy to do anywhere in the world. I have on my I have my love foam roller on one of my videos. It's one of my chapters, and I'll tell you why. The most important what? reason is to lie down on it lengthwise. Your head is on one yeah. end, your uh, hips are on the other, your knees are bent, feet are on the floor, arms out to the side. That's the exercise I want everyone to do. That's it. It's all about oh. opening up the chest, extension, because we're driving, we're texting, we're on the computer. So we are always flexing the front of our bodies. We're always closing in. We want to open our hearts. We want to open our lives and just feel good. That is my thing for everyone. Brush your teeth. Use your foam roller. Oh, I love okay, wait, Oral health is my actual favorite too, so I love you. Okay. So, so, okay, I think that's that is the most perfect thing to do right now. So that's how I would love to end this is that this is Connie Ponchiro's invitation, not just a challenge, but an invitation yes. to everybody to open their hearts and she's giving you physical homework and tips to do this. Um, yes. and where can they see that is it a chapter or a video or a tip? It's, that, it's that, one that of my chapters order. and I off the top of my head I uh uh, I can't remember, but it's it's videos, and it's all about the foam roller, and it is on my com. And then follow me on Instagram. I love Instagram. Yes. I do lots of stuff on Instagram, so follow okay. me, Connie Pontero, and uh, also on Facebook. I'm writing that down right now, so I do it as well. I, you know what? I'm I'm kind of I'm, I'm slacking on my Instagram, but I'm going to now. See, you're challenging me. As oh well. no, it's, it's so <laughs> oh, fun. You got to go. You got to go. Everybody's yes. there. It's just fun and and. Uh, you know, interesting and, yes. and pretty. So it's visual. Pretty. Yes. Well, yeah. okay, you just gave me so many ideas. I'm going to connect with you after the, after the show because I have so many exciting things to share. But thank you so much, Connie. Everybody, oh, Lisa, Connie, thank you and... for your light and love <laughs> and, and everything and all your listeners. Fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody, we'll be back right after these commercials. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Home Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Imagine tapping into a power where you can access the ability to transform your views of money, success, happiness, and fulfillment. A power that you could unlock hidden talents, uncover new meaning, and amplify the significance of your purpose. Well, the feminine heart is the source of that power, intelligence, insight, and understanding. Join this new wave of women's leadership that's emerging. Be the woman who knows her greatest power to create goes well beyond the day-to-day -day striving for results. Be the woman who knows her true power to contribute to the world in significant ways is one that expresses her heart, enlivens her creativity, and elevates her spirit. Rise, amazing woman, rise. An amazing woman legacy book compiled by Marsh Engel sharing the eight essential powers of the feminine from eight influential mentors, entrepreneurs, and change makers that will help you tap into that power. Rise, amazing woman, rise. Your legacy begins by leading with a feminine heart. Hi, it's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. <coughs> 
When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund. Hello, hello, welcome back. And you guys are all listening to Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry, and we are jumping into the second half of the, well, today's show for Rise Amazing Woman Rise interview series week three. And we are going to be exploring the six of the eight essential powers of the feminine heart that we now know are the future of success and leadership. And we are going to continue with self-authority. And we've got Petrina Wisdom online here with us. Hello, Petrina. Hello. How are you this afternoon? Ah. Hello, hello. Yes, it is. Is um, just just this day is just becoming. It's like building and building, and I love it. And so for <laughs> you to come on and and self authority, like it's such a. I love that it. It sounds originally to me as such a masculine thing, but you were going to share with us how it's so feminine. But before we yes. do that, let me read. Let me read your little uh, um, the the quotation the quote that we got from you for the book, and you're a powerful chapter. Um, and this, and then I'll, I'll read about their, your bio to everyone so they know who you are. You're, you're a spectacular woman, by the way. <laughs> well, I thank you. Well, you're welcome. Well, Petrina Wisdom says that the when we are not in our self-authority, we lean towards recklessness. We abandon our sense of worth. We underestimate our value and feel disconnected from all that we are. But when, when anchored in the power of self-authority, we consider, discern, and make choices that are in alignment, centered in alignment, centered and in harmony with our heart and mind and our spirit. Oh, Petrina, that is just so beautiful already. Oh, <laughs> it, you know, I, we uh, Yvonne actually, who's going to be with us. Um, no, Wendy, Wendy, Wendy is going to be on with us later. She actually uh, paired all of you authors just beautifully, like. You're sharing the show with with Connie right now, and it is you guys are just it's so in alignment, honestly. And everybody to to share with you about Katrina. Katrina Wisdom is an Amazon best-selling author, speaker, wealth mentor, and creator of the badass bodacious life movement. And that's the first time I've said that <laughs> word on air. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, she believes that in order to live a badass, bodacious life, you must connect with, embrace, and exercise every part of yourself. After losing her husband of 20 years to suicide in 2009 and learning that she was pregnant with her fourth child the same day, Petrina Wisdom took her personal story and decades of experience as an entrepreneur and business leader and began the process of creating her badass, bodacious life. Way to take the reins, my goodness. <laughs> she helps <laughs> badass moms. And, oh, I love this. It gets even better. She helps badass mompreneurs stand in their personal power and create an empowered life through personal, spiritual, financial development, healthy work-life balance, and sacred self-care, transforming busy moms' lives from stressed to blessed. I love that. Tired to inspired and difficult to... Joyful, of course, joyful. We just talked about joy too. I love it. <laughs> hello, hello. Yes, <laughs> what it's all about. Oh my goodness, your not just your story, but how you live your life really is okay. Here's here's my first. Define badass. <laughs> I know because bad badass can take on many meanings, meanings, yeah. but for me, badass is just willing to go, like willing to jump in, make it work, like unshakable. I guess if I had to put it in one word, Ooh. badass is unshakable. Oh wow, wow. Okay, willing to. Go. Oh my gosh, I have to unshakable. That's a fabulous word. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now well, think about and, it. You know, like the people that are badass, they're usually racing. They're moving fast. They're they're moving in a in a certain direction. People may not always agree with the direction they're moving in necessarily, but they're so convicted. They're so certain. They're so in their power. Yes, convicted, certain. Oh my gosh, these words are just crazy today. I love them. <laughs> 
see. And, and also you said about their, their moving. And it's funny that because you actually have created the badass bodacious life movement. Um, yes. Well, okay. What, what is that? Tell us about it. So if, when you think about movement for me, it's, uh, it's, it's the epitome of leadership, right? Because nobody's going to follow you if you're not moving. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Right. But so then, then that the next question would be, where are you leading people? And for myself, you guys, uh, you and Connie were kind of talking about legacy. For myself, my my legacy that I want to leave really happens every single day and almost in every moment that I'm in interaction with anyone because my mm-hmm. legacy that, I, that I'm wanting to leave is that I'm touching people to the core in every interaction. So I want to I, – I, I consider myself almost like a mobilizing healer, if you will, right? And in every interaction, whether whether I talk to a person or not, I want them to feel something. I want them to shift, to be changed, to be touched in some way just by being in my presence. If it's a passing them and, and smiling or looking into their eyes and knowing that they're seen or something that I say or a hug or whatever it is, I want my energy to be something that transforms people, whether we have an actual interaction or not. And that's the legacy that I'm looking to leave. So as a leader – it's standing in my own self-authority and by standing in my self-authority. Did I lose you? Hello? Oh, no. no, I'm still here. Oh, goodness. Okay, you cut out just on that last word, and I was like, oh, gosh, no. Okay. You are standing. You are standing in your power. Sorry. Um, I have to jump back. You had said something so, uh, so powerful. You, when you said along your journey and your legacy, even to just – uh, see somebody. And when I heard that, yes. it was so incredible because being seen is shifting, isn't it? That is movement. Just when a person has doesn't yes. feel like they've ever been seen. And oh, I love, I can just imagine you like, and you have stunning eyes, by the way. Everybody's got to go to your face. Thank you. Your eyes. <laughs> and, that's so, so neat you Thank you. and it it is moving. Like a lot of times when we have that, um, let me actually share this with us. When when you've seen pers- people and you're really truly looking at them and they look away, what is the first mm. thing that you're feeling and thinking of what, what they're going through? So the interesting thing is that most people are hiding. I know that's a huge blanket statement, but I think I'm pretty accurate. We're hiding, especially in today's world with technology. We're hiding behind social media. We're hiding behind email. People don't even answer their phones hardly anymore. And it just breaks my heart, honestly. Um, I actually used to be someone who hid. I hid behind my husband for years, pushed him forward to be the leader. I didn't look at myself as a leader. I didn't feel like a leader. I knew that I was powerful in the sense of being able to touch people's lives and how I, again, my superpower is that I see people, they feel my love, they're, they're transformed in my interactions. But at that time, my ideas around what leadership and impact is were more related to what you do versus to who you are or what you be. And so I really truly believe that shifting into self-authority is really owning who you are, who you be, how you impact people by doing nothing, right? I don't have to do to receive. I don't have to do to be validated. I don't have to, you understand? So that unworthiness, that deep unworthiness used to drive my life where I felt like I always had to go above and beyond and overgive and deplete myself for the purpose of having significance and, and, and owning or, or not even owning, uh, earning is a better word than owning, earning yeah. a position. Mm. And, and I honestly feel like when you let go of that and you truly are centered and grounded and you own who you are and, and your own self-authority just by being born as a birthright, like, <laughs> life changes. <laughs> You become a badass. <laughs> you just wrapped up badass. Oh, my God. You know what? I don't actually just made that up, but I just love that when you said earning versus owning. Oh, my mm-hmm. goodness. That's a – woo, that was a yeah. biggie. Um, that yeah. was shifting because yeah. I think a lot of people, they're like, I have to earn their respect, their approval, the position, the yes. money, um, the right yes. to. And as, how do we step into um, – our by using our self authority, how do we step into um, owning something versus er, the belief of earning it? 
So if you think about it, um, I think one of the thing, one of the biggest things, the most common things that we feel like we have to earn is people's love. We feel like we have to earn people's respect, right? And then you named off yeah. a, a bunch of others, right? Earning positions, yeah. earning money, all of these things. And mm-hmm. our worth is directly connected to earning those things. But that's BS. I don't know yeah. <laughs> how left we're going to go with <laughs> languaging. So I'll just say BS. Okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, and it takes, it, it often takes, you know, uh, uh, quite a journey and a long time to get to the space where you really understand and believe that to be true, that it's BS. So I think through my experiences and, and the other pieces that everyone else has bought into the lie, right? <laughs> everyone else yeah. is, is modeling that you have to earn, that you have to do instead of just being, and it's a completely different paradigm. It's a different model of leadership and, and just being, right? And so yeah. I just believe that, that somebody has to do it to show it can be done. And I, and I think at some point I just chose to be that person because the reality is you can push, you can force, you can earn, you can go out of your way to make people happy, and it doesn't work. <laughs> there's, there's no amount of service or love or possessions that you can give to someone. And if, if they're not, you know, ready to shift or change or respond to you in a different way, nothing's going to change. So if you're basing your worth off of how someone else responds or receives your love or service, then you're setting yourself up for failure every time. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I, I love that you actually shared that it's not about authority it's not about pushing or forcing because um i there's often a, a statement we'll hear is you've got to you've got to show them or the animal or whatever yes. who's the boss who's who's authority yes. and you're completely redefining this word right now yes. i'm loving it by the way yes. <laughs> well well if you think and, about it this entire book is about is about feminine leadership and what is the the superpower of the woman it's flow it's love it's grace, it's ease, it's receptivity. So we can't go into our lives anymore. We used to try, right? We had the the move, you know, the time when we were more, as they said, submissive, quote unquote, where we would stay home, yes. take care of the children, take care of the household. Then the feminist movement happened and people felt like, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to be equal to a man. Personally, I'm never going to be, I don't want to be equal to a man. Why? Like life is so much easier if I can be in a flow, grace, receptivity, and love, right? So I feel Mm -hmm. like we're in a time where things are recalibrating, right? Where we don't have to go back to being the subordinates or the submissive necessarily, but we also don't have to be in the pushing, forcing masculine so there's this balance, there's this space in between that is so juicy and powerful and magical and that feminine leadership. So just like you said a few minutes ago, I'm redefining self-authority because authority in itself, yes, it is a very masculine word. You're doing it in a feminine way. And when you own your self-authority as a woman, OMG, there's nothing you can't have. And it's not manipulation, it's being in your power. Yes, yes. And I right now I also feel like you're helping us to redefine submissive as well. And and those yes. are kind of the op- on the opposite ends there. And I love that because for me what I'm hearing is like to redefine submissive is uh, say that role, it's flow, it's love, it's ease, it's grace and, and receptive. Yes. Sorry, I knew there was one more. I was like, Oh, what is yes. that word? Um <laughs> and those are such beautiful words and they work yes. so well. They work so well. <laughs> yes. And interestingly enough, that's what my badass, bodacious life movement is all about. It's like, how can I be in my feminine as a woman, soft, beautiful, loving, right? All these things and still go kick ass in the world, like entrepreneurially or in business or, you know, be the nurturing mom, but also be this sexy, powerful woman, right? Like there has to be a space in between and me personally owning my self authority meant that I had to figure out a a way to integrate it all because I'm all of it. I'm all of it. I'm like super smart and super naive. I'm super sexy and super like, you know, timid at times. I'm, you know, a very much a, a, a supporter and a nurture, nurture, nourisher. I can't talk nurturer. Um, (laughs) 
But at the yeah. same time, I will like go get them and be assertive and like I, I get to be it all. And we all do. We all get to be it all. But society tells us we have to be a certain way to fit into certain boxes. There's these expectations, these roles that we're playing out in our lives that completely go against who we really are. So it takes learning yourself and standing in your self-authority to know your no, the difference between your no and your yes. And it's when we get caught in the space between the no and the yes, when complete frustration, confusion, and recklessness starts to, to happen. Yes, that word recklessness. Oh, I want to go back to that word in just a second because that's a big one. Um, the the one thing I was really – you've just helped me with something because a lot of the times – I just I actually think that you're going to be my redefining lady. That's what it is. You are my <laughs> redefining badass because there's something that's always been really um, – uh, pushes my buttons all the time is somebody, when somebody says, you've got to get out of your comfort zone. I'm like, why would I ever want to do that? Because I'm really comfortable right. here. But I just, you hit, you said a word that really hit me. And I think this is now how I will start defining it. But you said the word, old term, deplete yourself. And so I think, yes. I think how I, I might now know, or, and other people could perhaps do is that if you feel you are being depleted, then the authority mm-hmm. isn't you're doing maybe you're doing it in that pushing um forcing thing or you're being submissive in the other like that negative way so i'm right. bringing this full circle here when i think about um the word depleted i do think of the language moms use and so if you're a yes. mompreneur how can they have like you do this, this is what you specifically help the, that group you help how do you help them yes. to recognize when they are depleting themselves Yes. So, well, here's the thing. We have thermometers, right? And mm-hmm. if you if you look at the thermometer, a lot of us have our thermometers in our homes or in our offices set at a certain at a certain level, right? So, whether mm-hmm. it's let's just say it's 72 degrees, right? So, if you're used to being at 72 degrees, then you need to to stay at 72 degrees. You need to know what your threshold is, and or like a gas tank, right? As you start to approach that 72 degree mark, you need to fill up your tank uh, and not let it get down to 72 or below. So the depletion comes when we get below that 72 degrees, okay? (laughs) So however you want to think about it, you can think of it in terms of a thermometer, you can think of it in terms of a gas tank, you can also think of it simply as a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, right? And one of my mentors once said, Lisa Nichols, one of, she once said that you want to function from a full cup. So if you think of your tea cup, you want to keep it full, right? And you want to mm-hmm. serve from the overflow. You actually want to serve from the saucer. And what we do as women is we give yeah. it away, give it away, give it away, give it away. And then when we start to feel tired or when we start to feel off and unbalanced and sad and emotional, then we go try to solve the problem. Well, that's not preventative. That's, you know, that you're treating the problem after it's already created, right? That's the, that's the, you know, it's not the right way to go about it. So really we have to use our own energy levels, our emotions as women. That's our biggest superpower. Once again, is it's a, it's a, it's, they're signaling us, they're letting us know. But before we get to the point where we feel tired, where we feel, you know, emotional and all those yeah. things, we, we just need to keep our set point. We need to raise our set point first off. And then we need to make sure we're maintaining that self, self set point. And we do that through sacred self-care. So I call it sacred because we as women have a, a tendency to take care of everyone else and put ourselves last on the list. We have to flip that. We need to treat ourselves as if we are God because spirit, God, source, whatever you believe in, lives within you, and you're a representation of that spirit, source, God. So would you treat God in the certain ways that you treat yourself? Would you deny God, spirit, source in the ways that you deny yourself? No. Mm -hmm. You have to become that. And, 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 and really nurture yourself, love yourself and care for yourself as if you are that, you know, 
Yes, I love that you said we have to treat ourselves first. And um, I have to highlight those because this is fun. If everybody could go to um, your Facebook page, I'd love for you to share your – I know I'm going to make you shrink it in about a two-minute story. But um, mm. you have a great story about treating yourself first and raising your set point. And I read it mm. on Facebook, and I had to like it because I loved it. And so anybody right now, it's Patrina Wisdom who we're speaking to on self-authority. And I would love for you to share your car story. Oh, my car story. <laughs> yes, I thought you totally treated yourself first, but you raised your set point. You did step a smidge yeah. out of the comfort zone there. I'm so proud of you for sharing that, by the way. <laughs> well, thank you. And it's so interesting because it was such a long, you know, journey. Like, just the journey itself was so interesting and, and trying to condense it and be able to put it in a quick little post. But, um, you know, and and honestly, it speaks directly to this speaking about self-authority and specifically my, yeah. my stories around money, because I was, mm-hmm. I was raised with a single mom who had me at 16 years old. You know, we never, I didn't come from money. Like we never had money. We were stealing from Peter to pay Paul. We, you know, couch for, yeah. for a while, like we went through it. She was a teenage mother. And so I never learned about money. I never cared about money. I never valued money. Um, Mm -hmm. In my home, the most important thing was love. I always had love. So I didn't really realize I was even impoverished in any way until I grew up and other people told me. (laughs) So (laughs) so, so in meeting my husband and creating my whole life with him, that was probably the first kind of up level as far as my money stories and things. But again, I was hiding. I let him handle it all. Here, you handle the money like most women do, right? Go from our parents' home to our husband's home and let them handle it. Uh, I didn't want to know. I didn't care. As long as everything was taken care of, we're good. Because all I need is love. That's my value, right? (laughs) So so in the years since losing my husband and really like being catapulted into the position of having to be the breadwinner, the one managing the finances and being responsible and all of these things, it's really made me come fit eye to eye with the money story and having to heal that. And inside me lives a scared little girl when it comes to money and this warrior goddess, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And they're constantly at war. So in every decision around money, am I going to choose the scared little girl or am I going to choose the warrior goddess? So to bring the story short, um, I got rear-ended last year. I actually got into two car accidents last year, which is so weird in the same car, but the second one totaled my car and my car was paid off. I loved my car, had a ton of miles, but it treated me great. Did not have any intentions on getting a new one. Um, When it was totaled, I ended up getting, you know, a little check, but it was a 2010. So it wasn't enough, anything substantial. And so I had a decision. I was faced with a decision to go and buy a car cash, which because of my money story, I, I've done everything cash since my husband's passed. I didn't have credit cards. I bought my house as cash. I bought my car as cash. That's just how I roll. Like, pay cash, be done. Don't think about it. There's no fear. There's no scarcity surrounding it. Um, and this past November, December, I made a decision that I was going to now address that, that I was going to attain credit, that I was going to start utilizing credit like the wealthy people do, right? Leverage. Mm-hmm. And Leverage. um yeah, and really growing in that area. So when this happened with my car, it was kind of the universe going, ha, 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 ha. Now let's see what you're going to do. <laughs> so it was such a tumultuous decision for me that I actually spent almost three months, like, figuring out what kind of car I was going to get. I hate car shopping. Just the whole thing stresses me out. And um, so I finally got my car delivered. It just so happened that it came the same day as another huge up level. Um, I actually decided I was, I was going to sign a lease, a three-year lease on an office space for my financial business. And um, even though I had purchased the car probably about a, two months prior, it didn't get delivered until the day of my grand opening for my financial business. Wow. So wow. it was oh my huge. It's, yes, talk about being between your yes and your no. When I choose my yes, the universe always shows up and huge blessings happen. 
Uh, I said yes to getting my own office. That's been the most amazing decision. It's only been a month that we've been in there, and my business has picked up incredible momentum. Then I said yes to the car, and I can only – you know, imagine kind of what, what's next, but we have to build the muscle like anything else of undoing the stories. We can't just sit through therapy or get coaching and talk about it all day long. We have to make a new decision and that's what creates our reality. Well, you know what? I just, I'm, I wrote, read that story and I thought, not only am I going to like it and love it because I had such a similar experience that I just, I just was so proud of you, but happy for you and all those things. And I know that other people can do this. And as I'm nearing the end, I can't believe again, it's almost over. I want to just make this huge invitation for anybody who needs to choose between their yes and no, I want you to connect with Petrina Wisdom. Jump on other her you know, Facebook page or there, or pick up the book, Rise Amazing, Rise uh, and by Marsh Angles, and read this, read all of the chapters, but really I just want to invite everybody, if you are having difficulty choosing between your yes and no, you must talk to Petrina. So Petrina, I want to say thank you so much for being on this show. I just I love yes. it. I wish it wasn't over. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. We needed like two hours. <laughs> I know. Right. Well, maybe we will. Okay. Well, everybody, thank you so much. Thank you for the first half with Connie and second half with Katrina. I wish it was so much longer. We are going to continue. We've got one more week to go on the Rise Amazing Rise Women series. And and everybody, thank you. Just thank you so much. My heart is so open. 